For several years, great strides have been made in the local fight against HIV. This fight has been made largely possible by money provided as grants from the Global Fund. However, with Jamaica being reclassified by the major donor agency as an upper-middle income country, the financial support will be dwindling. If we were a middle-income or a lower-middle-income country, we would be able to apply for unlimited funding. So we would be able to apply for it to fill our complete needs. Sanya Sutherland says the overall HIV response will be changed, but it won't be as drastic as previously feared. The reality of the situation is that under previous funding arrangements, the National HIV Response Program was able to apply for broader funding, but now that has changed. Under the Round 7 and Round 3 grant, Jamaica was eligible to apply for generalized funding, which would mean that we could apply for a grant to target general population. Under this new, um, under the transitional funding proposal, which we just received approval for, which will come into place in August, we are only eligible for support for key populations. And those key populations are the populations that are most affected by or vulnerable to HIV. So that would be our men who have sex with men, our sex workers, our out of school youth, our, um, our drug, homeless drug users, etc. One of the major casualties of the funding cut is the current television ad campaigns which targeted the general population using mass media to disseminate information about HIV prevention and care. When you have a lot of funding, then you target general population but we don't have that same level of funding. Under this new targeted funding pool, we won't have funding for generalized media campaigns. So we have a very good presence in the media in terms of targeting with our risk reduction messages. Um, less partners, less risk, um, HIV testing, uh, and pinch leave an inch and roll, for example. So we won't have funding for that under this new funding mechanism. There are fears that the absence of a mass media campaign will erode some of the gains made and may result in new high-risk groups emerging in coming years. Ainsley Reed, who was a face of one of the ad campaigns, believes that the advertisements helped many Jamaicans to get tested. I have traveled Jamaica, the length and breadth of Jamaica, since that campaign. And the response to my presence is awesome. I have people who walk up to me and said, man, you have changed my life. Despite the government saying it is committed to the HIV response and there will be no reduction in the standard of care now being provided to HIV-infected Jamaicans, there are some jitters within the community. But we know that what we hear on the ground is different from the reality. So the community of people living with HIV get nervous because we know the importance of maintaining treatment. You know, many of us who have been diagnosed with HIV 20 years ago, 5 years ago, 30 years ago, 29 years ago, 25 years ago, and in whose lives treatment have made a, a vast improvement. With some uncertainty about how the funding cut will impact the supply of medication, there are reports of infected individuals hoarding medication or not taking medication as prescribed in order to not run out. There is implication for even hoarding. You know, if I get medication now and I put it up, you know, the medication has an expiry date. You know, so it can only last so long and no more. So hoarding is not, is not the ideal for people living with HIV in terms of hoarding medication and so on. Meanwhile, program coordinator at the Caribbean Vulnerable Community, Ivan Cruikshank, says while Jamaica isn't at panic stage just yet, the local HIV response program is at a crossroads. We are at the crucial stage where we have to really pause and take stock of where we're at, where are we investing our resources, how are we going to strategically realign our investment to make sure that we minimize the increase incidence of HIV. He says with the shift in the local HIV response, there needs to be more studies done to identify emerging high-risk groups. There is a little bit more work that I think we need to do because we have also recognized that it will involve a broader type of conversation with key populations, with communities, with private sector, 
about how they need to be able to step up on the plate to support the HIV response and ensure its sustainability down the road. We also have the issue about integrating the HIV response into a broader health response. And some of those conversations are, are not yet happening. And I think that is where I think we need to become a little bit more concerned about the pace at which we are moving um, to make sure that we are not losing precious time. In the meantime, Ainsley Reed wants a more integrated care system for HIV-infected individuals as they grapple with other medical complications caused by a compromised immune system. Because of the medication, I just get fatter and I start developing what we call non-communicable diseases. So now I have, you know, high cholesterol. I now have liver problem where my bilirubin gets elevated. I now have vertigo. Um, I have high blood pressure and I have to be taking medication for all of those plus my antiretroviral medication. So, you know, we talk about the sustainability of the response. We have to find a way to integrate the people living with HIV who are in care into primary care. Move now from the treatment site into other health and the public health services so that we can get better treatment Better treatment meaning that more doctors need to be trained to deal with us. Ivan Cookshank believes that with harsher economic times ahead for countries which usually support Jamaica's HIV intervention programs, while hoping for the best, Jamaica should prepare for the worst. We might not get more money in the future, and I don't think we need to pin our hopes on getting more money. So we need to be able to rethink our strategy.